Can one of Japan's top gamers use his knowledge and skills to conquer the game of life? Hello everybody and welcome to this light novel review. I'm Justice R. Stone and my channel is all about light novels. The whole goal is to try and help grow the fandom as well as help all of you find a new light novel to love. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can keep up with all of my future light novel videos. In this review, I'm gonna be talking about volume number one of Yuki Yaku's light novel series, bottom tier character, Tomozaki. This is artwork by Fly. It's released officially in English by Yen On with a translation by Winifred Bird. If you'd like to pick up your own copy, I've got a link in the description down below. Bottom tier character Tomozaki tells the story of Fumia Tomozaki, who is a teenage boy who is one of the top gamers in Japan. Now, he says this because he's the number one ranked player of one of the harder PvP games in Japan, so it's kind of like a self-appointed title. In any case, one day he faces off against the number two player of the game, and at the end of the game, that person messages him and says, hey, would you like to meet up in real life? And, well, Tomozaki says, hey, why not, you know, it's all right. So he goes to meet this person and is rather surprised to find out that the number two player of the game is Aoi Hinami, one of the most popular girls in his school. Hinami is less than impressed that the number one player who has defeated her is Tomozaki, because in her opinion, he's doing absolutely nothing with life. He is just kind of given up on everything except the game. And Tomozaki, of course, explains to her, well, that's because life is a crappy game. I mean, it's unfair, it's unbalanced, there's all sorts of like cheats that certain people are just born with. Like there, there's absolutely no way that you can just game the system like of life, unlike a video game where there's rules, there's mechanics, there's physics, there's all sorts of things that once you've unlocked that, anyone can be really great at a game. And Hinami kind of looks at him and goes, you know, for an amazing gamer, you really just don't kind of get the fact that life is a game and that there's rules and there are ways to game the system and there's cheats and you just have to put some effort into it. And so the two of them, after a little bit of a philosophical battle and this discussion about life, basically Tomozaki says, all right, fine. She gets the best of him because you know, the whole gamer competition part of him. He basically is like, okay, fine. If you're so good at this, if you know these cheats and everything else, I'm willing to learn from you. I'm willing to give a shot and see if this game of life is actually as good as you say, or whether at the end of the day, I'm the one who's right that it's absolute garbage. And so the quest of Tomozaki to learn ways that he can improve his life and win at the game of life begins. Now, a lot of people have said about this volume that bottom tier character Tomozaki is almost like a self-help book in a lot of ways. The structure of the book essentially has Hinami telling Tomozaki to focus on one particular thing, whether it be improving his communication skills, whether it be improving his posture. She has these sort of steps that he's to follow and with each step, she gives him a challenge, a life goal, if you will, that he is to try and unlock by mastering that particular skill. And so most of the book, each chapter is sort of aimed at Tomozaki trying to improve a particular aspect so that he can participate in everyday life and try and get ahead as opposed to being that kid who just sits in the back and is ignored by everybody and, you know, basically goes through life without even trying. In essence, I think a lot of this makes it sound as though the whole idea is to try and subvert Tomozaki's personality and to try and make him homogenous with the normies. But I have to say that one of the things that I truly loved about this book was that it did not feel as if it was as much a war or a battle between what is better, the, the normies, the otaku, the gamers. 
So often I find in these sort of slice of life books and even in isekais where, you know, a otaku or shut-in has been isekai'd, there is this sort of sense that one is truly better than the other. And I didn't get the sense of this. Tomozaki, as he works on certain aspects and truly focuses on observing the behaviors of other people, gains respect for how certain people are able to so easily play a role within conversations or shift from one group of people to another. He is in awe at times of Hinami, who he realizes isn't just talking the talk, but she's actually walking the walk when it comes to trying to master these aspects that she is having Tomozaki work on. Even by the end of the book, it doesn't feel as though Tomozaki himself is being changed in so much a way that it is just trying to give him the confidence to assert himself. In fact, as the book goes along, he actually seems to be far more strong and confident in expressing his love of the game that he's so good at, as opposed to trying to be quiet about it, being ashamed of the fact that he's such a good gamer. In a lot of ways, he is able to express himself in a far more clear and direct manner. And there are quite a number of times in this book that, despite its potential message of try to be homogenous with society, it actually seems to praise the idea of individuals. Hinami talks about how Tomozaki and another one of the side characters in this book are actually very rare because they are able to express their own thoughts and ideas without constantly filtering them, censoring them, being worried about what other people might think and everything else. That the ability to speak their mind is actually a gift. At another point in the book, Tomozaki basically says to another character that perhaps they should pursue what they want to pursue. Perhaps they shouldn't be so worried about subduing their own desires and their own personality just to fit in. And this character actually does take that to heart. And despite the fact that, you know, you can tell that to an extent she has looked down on Tomozaki because of where he is ranked in the social hierarchy of school. I also think this book works very well because of the characters themselves. Tomozaki is a character that I find to be very relatable and likable. As much as I love, you know, my youth romantic comedy as wrong as I expected Hachiman for his unique personality, the fact is is that at times it can be a little grating, and at times it can be a little off-putting. Tomozaki strikes, I think, a nice balance between a character who views life with a certain amount of cynicism, but at the same time acknowledges that it's not a bad thing to be good at life. It's not a bad thing to be able to play the social games of life with ease and comfort. And even Hinami herself is a very engaging character. She is this character who always seems to walk this fine line between being harsh as a teacher, but also in some ways being quite kind and sweet. She is supportive at the same time that she is like a taskmaster. And I think as the book goes along and you start getting more involved in her character and seeing sort of how she has worked behind the scenes to become who she is and to obtain the position that she has, you gain respect for her because you realize that this isn't a character who is being presented as she was just born perfect, but rather she has worked very hard to try and be perfect. Even the fact that the book has one of the sort of king of the normies being almost as into the video game that Tomozaki is. And so in that sense, this book really does blur the lines between, you know, who is a gamer, who is not a gamer, whether gamers can only fit into a certain social strata or not. It is one of those books that I feel works try kind of hard to say, there is a balance achievable, and that just because you are particularly in love with one thing or good at one thing or seen by people as a certain thing, it doesn't mean that that's the only thing you can do or the only person that you can be. In a world that seems kind of crazy and 
dark and depressing at times, I really enjoyed this book's sort of message of optimism and this idea that really with effort, just about anybody can achieve what they want and gain confidence to pursue the things that they want to do. Also in a market that's been filled with all sorts of, let's face it, lots of fluff when it comes to light novels or, you know, lots of fantasy stuff that is cool but may not necessarily have a message, it was kind of interesting to read a light novel that actually made me think about how do I carry myself? How do I present myself? Heck, it even had me kind of considering my own posture, for goodness sakes. So overall, with its combination of really good characters that are relatable and enjoyable, as well as some positive messages, and just a nice balance about not hating on one particular type of person, I thought bottom tier character Tomozaki was probably one of the best slice of life light novels that I've read, certainly one of the more relatable ones, and even though I wouldn't say that it has some kind of really big plot at this point, it certainly leaves all sorts of room for these characters to go in the future. In this video I want to say a special thanks to FixLab.com, Michaela Werner, Philip Vosseberg, Jean-Luc Chartier, and Ricardo Matos for their support on Patreon, as well as the support of all of my patrons who help me to buy books so that I can review them here on the channel, as well as pay for additional hosting for the Light Novel Podcast so we can get the message of how awesome light novels are to as many people as possible. For my next review, I am returning to the fantastical world of Isekai, but uh, this one, well... As much as I found the characters of Tomozaki relatable, I think I might relate to this character as well. And my next review is going to be volume number one of Ascendance of a Bookworm. Gonna read a book about a book lover. <laughs> I've heard great things about this series, so looking forward to checking this one out. That'll be my next review. In the meantime, like I said, if you have not subscribed, don't forget to hit that button so you can check out this review as well as a ton of future reviews. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye bye for now.